What business practices can I be slowly integrating into what I do so I'm testing and sort of pushing what I do to be more business-like? When it comes to sort of design and business and how much should you be thinking about design and how much should you think about business, it's, it's massively important to embrace the kind of business side because what you'll find is the things you'll start to hate about your design life are often disguised as business problems that you could solve if you thought in a business way. And I've often thought that if you apply business thinking to what you do, it's much, much easier. So if I was running a hotel or if I was running a shop, it would make sense that I have to sell things to pay the bills and I've got overheads. Therefore, I've got to sell a number of products. That means I've got to be actively marketing and I've got to be finding new people to buy them. And I've got to be refining Facebook ads and testing and measuring and doing new designs. And there's a balance. If I want that to continue, I've got to balance the combination of doing the work, raising awareness, managing my money which is just business. If you're a freelancer, you don't often think about that. And that's why we go from this sort of feast of famine of I'm really busy, then the work dries up. So I go out networking, I've got no work, and then the work comes back. So with all these things, it's all about what business practices can I be slowly integrating into what I do? So I'm testing and sort of pushing what I do to be more business like. So an example might be, you might decide to open up a Shopify store, and set yourself the goal of I'm going to earn an extra thousand pounds a month from my Shopify store. Now, in theory, that may, seems not like a big ask, but it is because you've got to learn how Shopify works. You've got to find someone like Printful to fulfill it. You've got to do research on what designs are popular. You've got to build an audience. You've got to run ads to the shop to sell things and make your margins and make sure you're making profit. That whole experience is quite fun, opening a Shopify store and sort of doing your designs and getting the feedback and people buying them. But then the reality of making that sustainable is tough. Making a profit's even harder, but it will teach you loads about business. So I think when it comes to like business thinking, it's about sugaring you know, the medicine and trying to make a way of being able to sort of behave like a business without it feeling kind of like really heavy and sort of boring. So that would be my thing is like, how can I learn business lessons by doing fun projects for people? The other thing, if you want to kind of uh, evolve your business, I'm a big believer in trying to build a, a really solid process that you work from that can be repeatable because so much energy is wasted in having inconsistent project processes. Like, for example, how do I get clients? Where do they come from? Have I done that work? Then what's the onboarding process? How do I run a project and what's the handover process? Now, the value of doing this is, for example, if I write down all the steps that it takes from first client meeting to handing over the work and I write that down, I can follow that. And then when I do the next project, I'm going to follow it again and I'm going to refine it as I go. So I'm going to make changes going, OK, so actually we need to have three meetings before I hand over the work or we need to have it set up in Dropbox and I need to have brand guidelines so I can then make sure that every time I'm uploading the work, I have the same list of the same files that are needed. As I slowly evolve that kind of process, what happens is that I can make it better. And the big thing, and this is the, the breakthrough, is not only can I make it better so I save time and I'm more efficient and I produce consistency of outcome every time, but also the big thing is that I can start to hand off this process to other people to do for me. So by removing me from the process and say, replacing myself with a freelance designer and a project manager, I can actually take my project and really enhance it because now I can go, well, okay. So if I'm running a project and I'm charging 5,000 pounds to do branding at a website, say, and I fulfill that myself, how about I charge that 5,000 pounds, but this time, instead of doing it all myself, I pay a project manager a thousand pounds I pay a freelancer £2,000 and then I keep £2,000 profit, but I'm not doing the project. So now I could go and get a second project. So I can do the second project. They can do the first project. I've run two projects. I've made £7,000. All of a sudden, I'm making more money, but I'm not doing more work. And the reason why is because the process is allowing me to do that. So this is how you can begin to scale your business. But it all starts with auditing what you're doing and how you're behaving and trying to understand where there's room for improvement. And it's a bit like the, the drawing behind me. If I keep doing the process the same and I improve it every time, the quality of outcome is much more consistent, which again, builds my reputation because people have more faith in me because I'm consistently delivering. 
And like I said, if I get ill, doesn't matter. I've got other people I can bring in and I just say, follow the list. And this is exactly why when you go to McDonald's or Starbucks, you can get a coffee or a burger the same anywhere in the world because everything has a process. And all of these processes make up what is called a turnkey business. And I didn't really appreciate that until you're in another country and you go, oh, I want a Big Mac. And it's the same as what you would have at home. And anyone can work there. And it's all because of the process being set up. So like I said, one great thing any designer could do to improve their business, as well as auditing where are my clients coming from and how could I make more money and how could I build a sales funnel and stuff like that, I would audit your process and develop it and refine it so that then you can repeat it more often and eliminate the risk and actually slowly start to scale up what your offerings are. 